evening, everybody, and how are we all doing on this lovely Sunday, the 27th of March, 2022? Clocks have changed, so we're not an hour early, although it does feel like it, doesn't it? It seems, I don't know about anybody else, I'm, I'm looking outside and the sun is shining, it feels like I should still be outside and enjoying some of this lovely gardening weather. Um, so today, I'm going to be talking about some natural plant remedies. This is a subject that came in from the audience, something that I've done quite a bit of research on over this week to try and find more things that I can demonstrate and show this evening. And of course, I want to hear from you guys as well. Uh, before that, we'll go through what I've been up to over this last week since I was last here. But first of all, let's see if anybody is actually out there. And I can see, yes, Valley Cillian is out there. Good evening to you. Uh, Philly SPB, good evening to you. Turbo Stream, good evening to you. Uh, Rebecca Hawkins, good evening to you. Um, um, Turbo Stream says he has done no gardening at all this week. He went to Pembrokeshire instead. Uh, but he also says is it's still too early for being doing too much, especially with the return of winter at the end of this week. Something I'll talk about in just a minute, actually. Uh, Grow veg, gardening done, bath run, and ready to watch VGP. Lovely to see you there. Good evening to you. Anna Jones, good evening to you. Hope you are well. Adrian is there. Good evening to you. Oracle Arts, good evening to you. Hope you are well. Uh, da, 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 who else have we got? Hargrave, Ga Hargrave Gas, evening. Oh, what a great week we've had. And now it's light in the evenings. Indeed, it's lovely, isn't it? Uh, Graham Arnold, good evening to you. Laura W., good evening to you. Amanda Joy, good evening to you. Kate Spratt, good evening to you. Uh, Nicola Cornish Heaven, good evening to you. Uh, Stuart Jackson, good evening to the Veg Grower Army and you. Uh, hooray, the clocks are finally forward tonight, of course. Uh, British summertime has begun, indeed. Uh, no sunshine in Birmingham today, sadly. We've had beautiful sunshine here. I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, Chinny Kate, good evening to you. Watching in the garden, lovely to see you. Uh, what else? Who else have I got? Anybody else? Not just Green Fingers UK blog. Good evening, love from Lisa. Good evening to you. Hope you are well. Uh, I think that is the roll call. Please do keep let us know if you're joining in the show. Please do comment in the comments. Now, this week, I think the highlight of this week has been the weather beautiful, hot sunshine. Um, really. I've had some early days at work, so I've been able to enjoy the sunshine and do a bit at home, only at home in the evenings. Now, it's been a case of doing sowing lots more seeds. I'm trying to really keep on top of sowing lots of seeds. We've got plenty of cabbages, cauliflowers, uh, tomatoes, you name it, I've been sowing it. We've also been pricking out lots of plants, rhubarb, um, lots of interesting plants that we have pricked out and getting those ready to go. We're keeping them indoors at the moment, though. We are keeping them indoors because, as uh, Tobo Stream said earlier, we are predicted a cold snap at the end of this week. It could well be a, a, a snow is being forecast. So I'm holding off getting my plants outside just yet. Got a few in the greenhouse, but I'm going to hold off just a little bit longer. Uh, so uh, that, that's been during the week. Saturday, yesterday, uh, I popped down to the allotment, went down there with my lawnmower, run around all the grass areas, chopped up lots of grass and tidied just, just basically at the moment. The allotment is in this sort of too early to plant anything out apart from potatoes we've done last week. But I'm just trying to weed things out and keep things tidy. But I did plant out my walking onions. These are something I've been looking forward to growing for quite a while. I got those at CD Sunday back in February. And these are they're basically onions that as they grow, they they produce other baby onions on their stalk, which when they flop over means that they grow in another position, basically making them as act as if they're walking. So rather interested in these walking onions and see how they get on. They're planted down on the allotment. Now at home, 
Uh, today we had Mother in Sunday, of course. So I had to go out and see my mum, and the mother in law came round, of course, as well. But I've been focusing a bit on my home plot. Now, on if anybody heard Monday's podcast, I spoke a bit about how I believe Grow Your Own can help um, the cost of live with the cost of living crisis, and I've had a lot of good feedback about that. A lot of people want to hear more about how we can uh, how grow your own can help with a cost of living crisis the downside that or, or the downside that i have and it's not necessarily a downside for me but for my job shall we say i have a garden i have an allotment so i'm very lucky in that sense so while i'm proposing and i'm going to be talking about this more on the podcast and i've been setting up I've divided my garden up into different areas. So we're doing windowsill gardening in the kitchen windowsill. I've got an area that I've got to the size of an average balcony. We're going to be doing it as a balcony garden. We've got a patio area. We're going to be doing plants in pots, patio gardening. And, of course, we've got the normal veg patch and the chickens, which a bit of uh, change going to be happening with the chickens later on this year, more than that, when that happens. So I've spent today getting that all set up and ready to go. So, uh, yeah, we're moving forward with this growing season. And, of course, I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys have been up to in your allotments, your gardens as well. Let us know in the comments. So where was I? Uh, Digwell Green Fingers is lurking in the background. Lovely to see you. hope you're well. Um, uh, it, Richard Phobes has joined. Good evening to you. Hope you are well as well. Uh, Bally Sim, get to the four dig well. You're the man. Get here. Indeed. Uh, Richard says, I have separated my parsley and planted them in a long planter pot. There we go. Richard Phobes is a prime example of what I was talking about as somebody who hasn't got the luxury I have with a large garden, plenty of areas to grow plenty of food. And that's why I'm um, going with the podcast at the moment based on this feedback I got last week. Um, Nicola Cornish Heaven, I potted on some tomatoes today, did eight potatoes, 30 litre buckets and potted up the first five uh, of my rows, 103 to go. Somebody's going to be very, very busy there. Um, what have we got? Turbo Stream. I aim to go down the plot this week to check on it. My main growing area is prepared and mulched. Indeed, I've been finding actually when I was down on the yard, and I forgot to say this, I've had to water everything, same as at home, particularly the greenhouse. We haven't had rain. I can't remember when we last had rain. And I can't believe I'm saying that that um, I miss the rain because I certainly don't miss the rain. It's been beautiful to have the sunshine, but watering is taking priority. Like I say, I believe at the end of this week, snow is predicted. So we'll see this idea. Uh, last week, planted potatoes in special grow bags. I've seen that. Yes, uh, Richard Vobes is also growing um, potatoes in grow bags as well, joining in this this uh, this whole thing. And Richard Vobes is something I have in the forefront of my head because I know his garden. He has not got much grow space. And I feel we can prove just how much we can grow in smaller areas. Uh, Rebecca was saying, I love this idea, Richard. Are you going to have a herb garden? So because I've got different areas set up and I want to try and grow as many different types of foods in these different areas, I herb, a specific herb garden isn't necessarily going to be um, uh, 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 built. But I do believe, particularly on a windowsill garden, a herb garden, herbs, has to be one of the most important things to grow. Uh, herbs you use in pretty much every meal, and something like oregano can take a sim something as simple as cheese on cheese on toast, sprinkle some oregano on it, and it takes it to another level. So it won't be a specific herb garden, but they like the windowsill. There'll probably be more herbs growing on there. Maybe a chili plant, um, a dwarf tomato plant. Um, something like that and again in the patio and the balcony garden that same sort of thing there will be herbs in pots on those areas as well um 
Dan has joined. Good evening. Somebody, we've got a couple of pictures coming up from him later on. Uh, and Stuart, as I said in the group earlier, potted lawn, lots of aubergines, tomatoes and chilies. Yes, a few photos of that coming up later on as well. Uh, Nicola Cornish Evan, snow. Yes, snow apparently is predicted. I don't believe in myself. I believe in when it happens, but I know it can certainly happen. And that worries me particularly with my potatoes. Potatoes actually will be okay because they're still underground, but had it been another couple of weeks, I would be very worried about potatoes. Uh, onions should be okay. Garlic should be okay. Um, most of my plants outside should be okay, but I will cover them over with a fleece um, a bit later. Uh, Kate says, I love it today. Continuing potting the greenhouse together and sorting some other areas. The super early runner beans I sowed indoors are not only massive, but now have flowers. I've learned my lesson about runner beans now. Yeah, uh, runner beans. I tend to wait till end of April, May time before I do runner beans and French beans. Um, purely because I know they grow fast and quick and therefore it, it, no point doing it too early because otherwise we end up with them getting too big and to um, take up too much space before they're ready to go outside. They are they are quite, a, I, I want to say, a temperate. So they do need a bit of warmth behind them before they grow. So, yeah, le lesson learned. But that's the great thing about gardening. There's no mistakes. There's just lessons to be learned. Uh, yeah, Digwell is correcting me on my pronouncing of or egg, uh, no, oregano. Um, I always get told off because I used I always get told off. No, what, however I pronounce it, I usually say oregano or oregano, depending on how you want to pronounce it. So, um, <laughs> however you want to pronounce it, is that fine with me? And if I do it wrong, I don't care. I try to, so many different variations, and everyone tells me it's still wrong. So. We'll see what happens. Stuart uh, Jackson. Also, I have planted my potatoes in bags. Excellent. Another thing I want to thank you for, the seeds. I've been sent by someone in the group for my plant sales. Fundraising up to date, £90 in two days, some over £500. As we know, Stuart each week is going to update us with his charity work, how he's selling plants in order for Brain Tumor Charity, and just how much money he is earning, or not earning, but how much money he is able to get to go towards our charity for that. Rebecca, I'm hanging back on planting my potatoes till Easter for that reason. The hard frost forecast for us on Thursday. Yeah, it is looking bad for the end of this, this week, but I'm sure it's going to be over and done with pretty soon. Uh, this warm weather is misleading. It's still March after all. Exactly right. I mean, it has felt like it has been T-shirt weather this week. And... I know April it is not unheard of for it to snow in April. Um, in fact, my mum always tells me uh, my birthday is April the 23rd and it snowed on the day I was born. So it, it just goes to show it can happen. We've just got to keep a close eye on the weather. Keep those fleeces to hand and just don't get anything out too early. Like I say, mid-May is my usual safety time. Uh, Bally Simmons says, just a suggestion for the bald explorer. Could he use a lot of hanging baskets on his yard walls for herbs and tumbling tomatoes, etc.? Now he has his painting done. Um, anybody who doesn't know, Richard Vobes, who is in the audience, has a, a YouTube channel called The Bald Explorer. He's just been painting his house. I couldn't watch that video because of my fear of heights. Um, but I, I believe it's done quite well. I have in the past suggested hanging baskets in his yard. Um, we'll see what happens this year. I think he's getting a bit better. Um, he's getting more into growing some more and more stuff. So hopefully hanging baskets, tumbling tomatoes or something, he may well grow. And that reminds me of stuff that I could do in this courtyard and patio area as well. Uh, we have more chance of snow in April than Christmas from Turbo Stream, indeed, Lee. Uh, cold and windy later in the week, yeah. Indeed, it is. And I think Stuart Jackson has just came in with that. You should never shed a cloud until May is out. Keep your best on. Indeed, indeed. I think it's always best to play it safe. Oh. Uh, Richard Vose does say, I want to put some pots on the roof of the shed, north facing. That's another idea I've said in the past and something we definitely can do. Richard, I need to come round and 
um, have a chat and see what we can do with all this. I've got so many ideas for your garden. Um, we'll have to have a chat one day. So just to remind everyone, the phone line is open 07307 135 174. We're running across the bottom of the screen. And let me just get the link ready. Uh, is that right? Yeah. And if you want to zap yourself in, the link to click on to appear on screen is going up in the chat right now. Um, oh, quick a couple more comments. Gutters with strawberries on wool for small gardens. Exactly what I'm thinking about. Um, and come and help me, Richard. Indeed, I will come and help you as well. Uh, indeed, I will. So um, lots, lots of things we can do. That was me. Sorry. Lots of things we can do there. Uh, can I have some ideas for my garden too? Yeah, well, you have so many ideas for your garden with oh, I have. Grown vegetables, grown herbs. I would have orchards. I would have uh, nutteries. So many things because you've got so much space. But lots of ideas I have. And it's hard to – sometimes, even though I'm lucky enough to have plenty of room, it's hard to keep my ideas focused. I think sometimes when you have a smaller garden, you can do so much more with it. It's just my sort of initial thoughts. Uh, live show setting up in Vobe's yard. Um, yeah, we might be. Yeah, I, I can actually take this live show out and about. Lettuce and leafy greens will grow in shade, Richard Bobes. Try a tray of lettuce and spinach. And there we go. Plenty of ideas there. And Amanda Suggett has joined. Good evening, everyone. Good evening to you. Um, the wifey has joined. I can hear Roxy barking. Is she okay? I uh, love to turbo. Right. Before we move on, let's have a quick look at some of the photos that have been sent in to me this week uh, here at the Veg Ground Podcast HQ. So first of all, my dad, Ian Suggett, he's in the audience. He's been busy making his own veg planters. He's going to give growing veg his own go this year. And he's, he's two sm small dish raised planter beds uh, we've got to say they look absolutely fabulous i saw them the other night they look great they're ready to go um, and i'm looking forward to seeing what dad's going to do with those he's got big ideas already uh jenny has sent in these flowers from last week's conversation about companion planting as you can see they are looking all beautiful and already attracting the insects in and looking awesome um, and it just look stunning, don't they, some of these flowers. Now, Kate, who is in the audience under Chili Kate, I believe. Uh, Kate's garden has got is off to a good start as well. Could have made that photo a little bit bigger. But she shared off her veg plot at home. She's looking to get an allotment very soon. So she's off to a good start. There's already onions. There's rhubarb on the go. All looking absolutely fantastic. Now, Stuart, he meant Stuart Jackson, this is. Um, I've just realised I've misspelled the word. But Stuart, he's mentioned earlier, he's been potting on chilies and aubergines. They are looking really good. Those chilies are particularly looking very, very healthy. Uh, Stuart's cold frame is also filling up quite nicely. Looks fantastic, too. Um, and that's it. That's it. Please do keep sharing your photos. You can post them in our Facebook group, which you can find by searching for the VegGrab Podcast on Facebook. We've got a page and we have a group. You can also um, send them via email, which is at VegGrabPodcast.co.uk, or you can just contact me through social media in anything like that. Sounded like I'm on the podcast now. So we're going to talk about our natural plant remedies, things that we can use to naturally help our plants. Let's just quickly go through some more comments that came in. Um, Bally Cillian says to Vobesy, make sure the shed roof is strong enough. Pots filled with wet compost can be very heavy. Again, that's something we'll discuss with him when I get the chance. Um, uh, Nicholas says, yes, having a fruit orchard and front meadow on our farm down in Cornwall. Um, we're somewhere we're hoping to go and visit later on this year. Idaho Garn Girl has joined. Hello, hello. Good evening to you. We're probably, I don't know if your clocks have changed uh, over there in America, but our clocks have gone forward now, so we might be a little bit early. I don't know for you. Um, 
Nick, I've been treating my shed this week. First two coats of wet and forget for algae, and then started planting with shades of sage green, giving it three coats, got one third done so far. Yes, it's been good weather to do that sort of thing. Something I've got to do this year is actually treat this shed that I'm in at the moment and refelt or pop roofing on my workshop shed. Um, just just it needs doing this year and i want to make the most of it anyway natural remedies now this is a subject i think it was graham who uh suggested this or was it rebecca uh excuse me i can't remember who it was but it's um it was a good, uh, good, good suggestion. It's something that's been on the cards for quite a while. And when I went to the show at the beginning of the month, I was actually given some natural remedy stuff that we're going to talk about a little bit later. But I, I did rummage through my my cupboard that I have down here, full of all these beads, fertilizers, and stuff that seems to hold on. I seem to collect. Seem to collect, shall we say, and I, I don't always use them, but well, I think sometimes we have got to start to use them. Now, this is the first one I found is this this bottle of Dr. Organics grass tonic and soil conditioner. Uh, Dr. Organics wonderful grass tonic not only feeds your lawn but so much more. 100% natural products create a healthy way of living, not just for your grass, but the ecosystem that we live amongst it. Over time, your soil will be very much improved, healthy bacteria will thrive, um, etc. etc. You basically add this to a watering can, you spray it on, or you uh, and it adds basic, uh, my understanding, sort of natural, healthy bacteria to the soil, which goes a long way. It, I don't know if it says, uh, doesn't actually say what it contains that I can see. So that's that's one of the samples of natural remedies that we can buy in. It's not all going to be stuff that we can buy in. Next, I haven't actually got the um, the box for this anymore, but Epsom salts. Now, this is, um, again, another very natural product. It's a great one to have. I like to use it. If my plants start to look a little bit on the yellow side, start to look just a little bit unhealthy, I just add a bit of this, and it seems to perk them up. It's very good with cabbages, very good with garlic. Um, again, it's natural and it's easy to get hold of from a garden centre. Pretty much everywhere we'll hold and we'll sell it in a in a garden centre as well. Uh, I I don't know if Epsom salts that you buy from a chemist, for example, to use in your uh, bath. I believe that's cheaper, but I don't know if it's exactly the same stuff. I suspect it is, but I've always bought it from a garden centre just to be on the safe side. Now, the next one is one that I know um, um, Digwell, Steve, he uses this stuff or this company all the time. It's grazers. Now, I'm in conversation with these at the moment. I'm going to be trying this out. This is slugs and snail. Uh, prevention it stops it or it, how do i word it it doesn't harm anything but it it encourages the slugs and snails away and it's all completely natural now they they, they avoid saying they're organic for some reason but it is natural as i understand it um again it doesn't say what's inside it uh, it's it's meant to be and i i take Digwell Greenfinger's word on this, because I know he's very good with his gardening. It's meant to be very good. So that's definitely one that I'm going to be using this year. So that is free that you can buy natural remedies that I will be using and have used in the past. So anybody else has any other natural remedies that they use, then please do let us know in the in the comments. Uh, Stuart says, one of the simplest things we could do is mint tea. Very good for you. Another is lavender in your bedroom helps you sleep. So, yeah, this is um, a natural remedies for you, which is a, another aspect that we could look at doing this as well. I mean, mint tea, very good, very calming. I do quite like the occasional glass of mint tea. Um, and lavender, another very good one, to, as he says, in the bedroom to help you sleep. Um, one of my favourite herbs, though, as a natural remedy, 
is fever few. Now it seeds everywhere. It's a pretty invasive plant when it seeds. But I chop it up and use it almost like parsley when it's growing. And it helps with my headaches. I get really bad headaches from time to time. And if I use fever few quite regularly, it seems to help reduce them. So there's one way to look at it. Uh, grazers is high in calcium and it makes the leaf taste horrible to slugs. So that was, as I said, Daniel Digwell would know more about this. This is this one, which I'm really looking forward to trying, actually. And I'm in contact with this company because we're going to be trying to um, try, try and various things out with this and see how well they do. Because they don't just do uh, slug and snail. They do it for a whole range of different pests um, and, and other things that we, we, we might use it for. All natural, as I understand it. So I was very, very intrigued with grazers. Uh, Ernie is joined. Good, a good sunny evening, Richard and viewers. What kind of veg, Richard, can you start growing this time of year? Thanks in advance. So that's a good question, actually. I would hold off for any squashes and beans, but pretty much if you're sowing them indoors, pretty much all your veg is ready to go. I would wait. Um, we're coming into April, so we're getting um, getting a bit better for it. But certainly tomatoes, chilies, cucumbers. Um, and cabbages, cauliflower, pretty much you name it, especially as we're going into April. You name it, you can sow it from April. Just not outside. You've got to wait till mid-May, I say, for it outside. There will be a podcast on that very subject coming up, not this week, but the following week. Uh, I once saw a video that made garlic spray to repel slugs. I think they boiled garlic in some water and used it to spray the leaves. Well, it's funny you should say that because that is something that I thought I'd do live on tonight's show. I'm just going to bring the overhead camera to show you what I've got. So what I've got in here, this is a garlic clove. It's Bit of a poor garlic clove to be fair. Uh, basically, I've just I haven't peeled it, I've left everything on there. I've chopped it in half and tried to crush it a bit, and then I've just pot it in this pot for tonight's show. Let me try and so you can see it a bit better. That's directly below. Now, what I did before I came on mm -hmm. before I started this live show is I boiled up, I've got my, my little camping collapsible kettle here i boiled up some water and i've just let it cool a little bit while we've been doing this show and what i'm going to do with this is make this garlic spray that turbo stream is talking about so i'm just going to add that to this garlic to make almost like a garlic tea basically that's pretty much what it is a garlic tea now i will leave that probably for about a week just to steep and what will happen that water will then just take on all that garlic take on all that goodness from the garlic and it does help deter slugs snails and actually quite a few things that garlic garlic um, tea does once that's once that's steeped once it's had a good week shall we say of steeping i'll drain it out and i'll put the water into a spray bottle and then any my hostas uh any lettuce or anything will be sprayed in that water and that will stop any problems uh, that's how i make garlic tea anyway so there may be different opinions on that but that's something we will go on about uh, throughout tonight as well uh, Nicola says sheep's wool is meant to deter slugs. Yes, I used uh, wool pellets a while ago. Instead, I don't like slug pellets that kill slugs to kill snails. And I did find the sheep's wool did deter slugs uh, quite well. I don't use any now because obviously I've got chickens and I encourage the birds into my garden to eat the slugs and eat the snails. But sheep's wool is a very good one as well for deterring that. Uh, slugs and snails. Uh, Anna Jones said, I've tried milk on me mildew. Didn't really work that well, though. Now, I do, I'm going to have to caveat this at the moment, actually, in saying I do have to be a little bit careful with what uh, I say works and what doesn't work because there is certain rules and regulations that come into play. Um, so 
you, you quite often hear me say one thing that I hear gardeners do, and that's just to protect myself so I don't get in trouble. And this is something that I hear quite often. People get mildew on courgettes or squash plants, and they spray milk onto it to get rid of the mildew. Anna says it did work for her, but I know there's been people out there that, that will swear by it. Um, again, be interested to know your thoughts on that if you have done that yourself. Uh, Bally said, don't know if it's true, but seems to work growing mint around the shed and polytunnel keeps the mice away. I've heard that as well. In fact, I think, um, what is it? What is it? Peppermint is meant to be a very good one for keeping mice away from your greenhouse and your shed uh, because they just don't like the smell of it. Uh, so growing a, your pot of peppermint is well worth doing. I will not use slug pellets from Stuart. I will only use eggshells and human hair to pot around the plants. I also use copper rings, but they have to be clean. There you go. So straight away, slug pellets are pretty... I don't know if anybody still uses slug pellets, to be honest. But eggshells, crushed eggshells, they're meant to scare off slugs. Uh, human hair meant to scare off slugs and snails. Uh, copper rings also, they're meant to give them a bit of an electric shock or they have a reaction to the copper. Um, there was one more I was going for here. Coffee grounds. That's also, and I tried this once. Uh, I poured coffee grounds around some lettuce plants, and any slugs and snails that went on the coffee got covered in that coffee grounds that they didn't like it. The downside with coffee grounds, um, this is a bit bit technical. Yeah, chances are, if it's used coffee grounds, there's going to be very little caffeine in it. But coffee plants and other plants that produce caffeine they produce caffeine because it's a natural weed suppressant it stops for weed seeds from germinating so a, 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 something like a coffee plant produces caffeine to outdo its competition and something to think about as well as a another natural weed suppressant um this is uh, Digwell's come back, says about the milk on powdery mildew is you need to apply it before the powdery mil mildew uh, appears. Um, yeah, again, I've, I've not I've not had to try that myself, but I have heard a lot of people swear by it. Might try growing mint around the chicken run. Good idea. In fact, we're looking to move our chicken run once the uh, these uh, regulations, the chicken lockdown lifts getting annoying now and the chickens need some time out um broad beans are okay to sow now yeah that's it. actually one that is okay to sow now broad beans are pretty hardy uh good selection from ernie you're welcome buddy um i wasn't dreaming it lynn from turbo stream can't remember what i said now so uh good good Oh, my be the uh, garlic. That's it. Yes. How long would the garlic tea last for in the bottle? Um, I found it lasted depending on how much you made. So for that, that's probably that that amount of water is probably a month, maybe six weeks worth if I'm spraying it regularly. Um, so, but I have I have made a lot of it before, and it has lasted a whole season. Uh, you could crush the garlic, I suppose. Yeah, you could crush the garlic. You could blitz it. You could do anything. I was just doing it for speed. Um, Stuart Jackson, sheep's wool is good as long as you don't wash it. It does need that natural smell of uh, a sheep for it to be effective against slugs and snails. Um, Belly Syrian says, yes, Richard, I always have lemonade bottles filled with water and garlic cloves stored in the polytunnel for spraying my outside veg. It seems to work a treat. Well, I think we're going to have to grow a lot more garlic. I know I've tried this in the past and it does work. Uh, not, I don't do it so much because um, I never have enough garlic. We don't buy garlic anymore. We seem to grow enough garlic for our kitchen needs. Um, so I always feel doing it like this can be a bit of a waste, but I think we'll have to grow a lot more of it. A smear of Vaseline around the edge of a plot will stop the slugs until it washes off. Is Vaseline a natural product? That's the question here. Uh, at coffee grounds, rubber soil nitrates as they break down. Yeah, a lot of pros and cons for coffee grounds, but... They do rob the ground of nitrates. They contain caffeine. Um, there's a lot of things to, to consider there. 
How did Stuart get on it in the school this week? It's great to hear what the next generation is learning. Stuart, how what did you teach the kids at school this week? Um, and how what do they learn? Badgers love coffee grounds, so be careful as they love sweet corn. Well, actually, this is a, a kind of natural remedy, I guess. When we had badgers on my old allotment, and trust me, they would decimate everybody's sweet corn. A lot of people gave up trying to grow sweet corn because of the badgers. So what I did, and I was the envy of everybody on that allotment site, is I grew badgers in a big wooden box. Now, when I say big, I'm talking this box was about three foot tall, three foot wide, three foot long. It was big and it was solid all the way around and underneath. There was no way the badgers were going to get in. What badgers tend to do is they bite the bottom to knock over the sweet corn plants and then they get the corn. Um, so <laughs> sort of a natural barrier, I guess, is a, a natural remedy if you have a problem with badgers and you want to grow sweet corn. Uh, Digwell says, I grow milk spray on my courgettes, etc., but not at home, only on the plot. It stinks as it goes rotten. Yeah, that what I did worry about growing with milk is that it probably would smell after a while, um, and, and uh, growing uh, various let me get my words out milk will go off, it does smell horrible, it does, especially in the middle of summer. But I'm guessing if you're watering the plants, I don't know how long it takes for the milk to work. Um, again, powdery mildew is a problem I get at home, not so much on the allotment, but a better way I feel to stop getting powdery mildew is to allow your plant plenty of space. The main reason that plants get mildew is due to poor ventilation. If you're squeezing, lots of plants into a small area which is easier said than done or we're all guilty of squeezing them into a, uh, a small area or why i get it at home i've got some tall fences down my side so they don't really get the winds like i do on the allotment so don't get any wind passing over it to clear a lot of it out of the way uh, so plenty of ventilation does go a long way to stopping um, <laughs> um uh mildew problems i think a lot of fungal problems actually for that matter can be reduced with a good amount of plenty of airflow i'm a, I'm a big believer in prevention is better than cure <laughs> nicholas says you grow badgers <laughs> did i say I, we grew badgers on the allotment i meant we grew sweet corn on the allotment but the badgers would come along and um, steal everyone's sweet corn. Uh, <laughs> apologies for the confusion there. Stuart, the children have sown butternut squash and pumpkin, potted on broad beans, peas, as well as starting to plan their shopping trolley gardens. Each class will be turning a shopping trolley into a garden. This is something I've heard a lot about and looking forward to seeing. Will this be at Malvern, if I remember correctly, Stuart? You're going to Malvern with these shopping trolley gardens. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Digwell heard me say I grow badgers. Apologies. Uh, sometimes doing these live shows, you're trying to think on your feet of what to say. Your words get very easily muddled. So apologies for that happens. Now, at this point, I'd just like to ask everyone, if you are enjoying this show and enjoying the chat, then please do give us a like. Please do give us a thumbs up. Please do give us a heart emoji as somebody has. How many have given us a heart? Two people. Um, no, one person has given us a heart emoji on Facebook. Um, please do do that. Please don't forget to subscribe. Please don't forget to click the bell notification so you get notified every time we go live. My voice is feeling very sore tonight. It's because I'm trying not to drink because I, I find when I do these shows and if I'm drinking, I tend to burp a lot, but I think my voice is starting to suffer from it. Uh, Turbo stream. Our main pests are badgers and pigeons on our plot. There is a badger set on the perimeter fence line. I can't grow carrots on the plot. They dig them up. Um, I think when it, yeah, I mean badgers are. I, I, I think badgers are a great animal, <clears throat> but they can do a lot of damage, and they are very difficult. When it comes to badgers, I feel it's just a physical barrier to stop them 
from getting into your plants. But badgers can climb. Oh, can they climb? I think they can. Hedgehogs can climb. That's what I'm thinking of. But they can dig as well. So you've got to be very, very determined to keep away badgers. Um, I do hear people who who have problems with deers, and I don't like this idea. But people who have deer hang up bars of soap. Now it could be a natural soap, of course, um, and that tends to deter deers. I don't like it though, because I just feel sorry for the deers. I mean, I wouldn't want to get a mouthful of uh, uh, soap just when I'm going about my business. So. Um, <coughs> Not, not an idea I want to suggest. Uh, yes, please, Amanda. That would be great. Just a glass of water if possible. Um, <clears throat> I don't. Does garlic spray work on aphids? No. Now, this comes brings me... Well, I don't know if it works on aphids, actually. I've never used it for that. It probably does work on aphids. But, uh, again, when it comes to aphids, I prefer to try and bring in the ladybirds. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Uh, try and bring in the ladybirds because they tend to eat the aphids. But what you can do when it comes to uh, aphids, get some natural washing up uh, uh, liquid into a sprayer bottle with water. What's happened here? Oh, I'm still here. I'm still here. Get some natural washing up liquid into a bottle with some water spray bottle that is um what is going on is that what's going on we're getting i can't work out what's losing our problem here i'll keep an eye on it yeah spray spray this sort of liquid soap onto aphids and that sprays off the aphids again i don't like doing that I'm very, very fussy in case you haven't worked it out when it comes to dealing with um, uh, insects. I, I much prefer encouraging ladybirds to come in and do the work for me. Excuse me, we got my young wife. Is, thank you very much. Thank you. Bought me a glass of water and she's going again. Ah, let's close that. There we go. Um, I'm a big, 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 big fan of natural predators. Uh, is aphid the same as green fly? Yeah. Um, what, you get various different types of aphids. Um, just going to have a swig of this quickly. Oh, that's better. <clears throat> uh, 21 watching. So 21 thumbs up, please. Please do give us a thumbs up. There's several people watching on Facebook as well, I know. Uh, no Marlborough for us this year. This is going to be the Jubilee weekend. I'm having a year off for Marlborough as I've lost my gardening partner at school. Very sorry to hear that. Um, uh, so, yeah. Uh, face Somebody in the Facebook group this is. Apologies. I don't know who you are because of how Facebook works. Uh, but whoever it is is saying, evening, everyone. A bit late. Blame it on the time change. It is confusing, this time change, isn't it? It's very, very confusing. Um, <laughs> Digwell says, I don't like it to Oracle, so fair enough, don't like it, give us a thumbs down. Um, evening, everything's coming through okay, oh good, that's okay, that's okay. Idaho Garn Girl, I've used ladybugs and I've tried the washing up liquid, just wondered if garlic would also work. Internet is very bumpy today. I'm not sure what's going on with the internet, it seems to... Uh, it seems to be okay here. Um, but I think garlic would probably would also work with aphids because, to be honest, with a liquid soap, all it really is is that jet of water pushing the aphids off from the plant. And I think it's the same with the garlic. Um, but you could probably do that with just with water. Liquid soap just makes water wetter, which makes it harder for the aphids to get hold of. Again, for me, Ladybirds. I mean, I'm lucky because we do have some very, very good nature resources around here. We, you know, we got like lichen growing on our trees and stuff. It's, it's quite lack of pollution here. They say uh, you need to start getting on with people. Dig well. Get the thumb up, please. Um, keep freezing sound and picture, but not together. Apologies. I can only see what I can see. It seems okay here, <laughs> except for my voice. That is. 
Do you buy ladybird larvae and pop them straight on the plant? I've heard about it. That's an option you can do. That is an option. You can buy ladybird larvae. But what I prefer to do, I think we spoke about this last week, companion plants, growing some wildflowers for the ladybirds to come in, creating like ladybird hotels or bug hotels. The ladybirds will just naturally come and, and find their way in. I'm not, not against buying in ladybird larvae, but generally speaking, ladybirds or any insects will go where the food is available, where they're not going to get killed. So if you're doing it, if you're providing them with their natural resources, they're just going to naturally come. I feel sometimes when you you buy in a, a, a ladybird larvae or uh, what are the other ones they do? Some of the other insects that you can buy in to boost populations in your, in your area. If there's not enough resources for them to survive, they're just going to bugger off. So get the resources in before you do anything like that. Some of my onions are covered in black aphids. Not many protect predators around to have at this time of year. Now that's... Um, I'm quite surprised, actually, you've got black aphids on your onions already. That's quite early. But that is actually a very, a very valid point, which is where the, the liquid sprays can obviously come into use. Um, I did see a ladybird in my van the other day. So ladybirds are about, especially with this warm weather, it might be they just need a bit more encouragement, a bit more of the uh, resources available to encourage them in in the first way. I'm just going to swing this. Uh, Digwell, the fatty acids in the soap dissolves the aphids exoskeleton, exoskeleton, causing them to dehydrate. See, that worries me when I hear that. I know that's really cruel of me, but it's because I really don't like hearing it any animal suffering, even aphids, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> hearing them dehydrate but you know if they don't do it and they decimate my crops then i get to starve so uh yeah yeah that's how it works funny you say ladybirds i haven't seen them in a few years really you haven't seen ladybirds in a few years like i said i saw one the other day in my van it climbed inside with me somehow um so they're definitely out and about now and they're definitely out and about and getting around so I think what we've got to do is just ensure that there's plenty of resources for them in order for them to support some but another was something that in order for them to survive. Jimmy, hello, not seen you for a while. Hope you are well. Uh, I spray Ikaba. That's exactly what I was thinking of when I was talking about your natural washing up liquids on aphids. So far as I know, it's safe around ladybirds, I hope. I also have neem oil for asparagus beetles. And there we go. That's the one we haven't mentioned, neem oil. I've not, not used that again myself, so that's another one to add to the list. But I tend not to use it as it is harmful to good bugs too. Um, there we go. So, yeah, I mean, I've got eek of, uh, in a camper van and we're trying to use it at home more uh, because it is a natural product. I've also uh, made my own soaps, including liquid soaps before, which is quite a natural way of doing it if anybody knows how to make soaps it's pretty easy but can be quite dangerous but again for me it's all about these natural products we do prefer here our natural products which i think more and more we should be moving on to in all honesty oh that's better my throat's not so sore now uh, I have ladybirds in my greenhouse, so they're out and about. Ladybirds are there. I think they just need a little bit more warmth. It worries me with these last couple of days, last couple of weeks, should we say, that we've had some nice, warm, beautiful weather. Um, and these ladybirds are out and about. There is a risk, of course, that this cold snap that we're expecting at the end of this week could kill them off. Like I say, make sure there's bug houses out for them. Make sure there's places for them to live. <laughs> what I quite like, you know, um, sort of plants that are hollow on the inside when they dry out, like straw. That's quite a good home for quite a few insects as well. Um, bundle some of that up and tie it up and off you go. We have some ladybirds already. Makes me happy when I see the first of the year. Yeah, exactly how I felt when I saw this ladybird and my first bumblebee the other week as well. 
Uh, there's a few things that seem to disappear. It could be the natural cycle of life, just. Could just be the natural cycle of life. Yeah, I mean, people are saying they haven't seen hedgehogs in years. I know like, we've got hedgehogs around here. I'd like to say, we have got quite a bit of wildlife in our area, and our council seems to try and encourage wildlife quite nicely, which I think is great. I do think the wildlife needs a home. Um, and I, I think something that I'm taking away, we're talking about natural remedies, and I, I do believe that insects and predators are probably one of the best natural remedies that we can have for our plants. Uh, Jim, neem oil is organic, but it's still a bit indiscriminate. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've never used neem oil. I think I got some of it for the soap making stuff. So I know it's organic, but I've, again, I've never used it in the garden. It was, uh, what was the other stuff that was recommended? Orange oil as well. That's meant to be quite nasty when used on certain insects. I believe... Um, uh, Idaho might be able to answer this better. I believe orange oil used on fire ants almost burns the fire ants. Um, I don't like the idea of that, in all honesty. I really don't like the idea of it, but it's uh, uh, an idea. Only thing we have is foxes and lots of them. Foxes are a very difficult one because there's not much that they're not afraid of. But what, what the main reason that you will get foxes coming into your garden is because they're looking for two things, food and water. So if you've got food hanging about, they will come in. If you've got water such as a pond, they will come in. So again, a natural barrier will help stop the fox, may make it a little bit harder to try and remove any food and water sources. Again, that's not so easy. Um, I've got chickens, as many of you know. Our Chicken runs are fox-proof, but if we let them out in the garden, which we can't do at the moment due to bird flu, but when we let them out in the garden, of course, they're an easy target for the foxes. Now, I did have a, another natural remedy. In fact, I've got a few natural remedies for when it comes down to weeds. And this is probably one of the biggest biggest problems that any gardener has on an allotment is the amount of time that you spend weeding and it's the same probably at home so one of the the top natural remedies i guess when it comes to weeds is to pour boiling hot water on your weeds and this is something that bob flower do practices and says a lot what he'll say is he, he makes his cup of tea pours it and then the uh, hot water that's left in the kettle, um, he just pours that, pours that onto any weeds. Of course, you've got to be careful it doesn't go on your plants, but that will kill off any weeds. Um, other natural weed killers, I'll see your hands. That's probably the best weed killer in my eyes. Uh, but covering things over so that weeds can't grow, be it the not so much the plastic environment, not environment, sorry, weed membrane. That's not so much natural, but mulches certainly, excuse me, help reduce that. Uh, Oracle says the foxes are on the allotment, so always going to be a problem. We don't have fire ants here, thank goodness. Okay, well, <laughs> then I have heard uh, orange oil and fire ants can be quite a, a way to go. Foxes like blood fish and bone fertilizer. Well, they smell anyway. Yes, that's actually and bone meal they like as well because that's they they can smell what they think is a food source. So they are attracted by blood fish and bone, thinking they're going to get a meal out of it. Um, that's something I'm always wary about using blood fish and bone and try not to use it because I know it can attract foxes. Ballycillian says, had to leave a polytunnel, polytunnel door open today while I was potting on veg for four wasps flew in. Never seen them this early in the year. Yeah, it is quite early for wasps, got to say, but they are, in the weather, I'm not surprised. This weather is, the weather has been lovely, but it does come with problems. If you use citrus oils on your skin, the sun will burn you. It makes your skin photosensitive. Never knew that. Never knew that at all. 
Uh, Oracle, that's true. I knew people that had planted spuds with blood, fish, and bone come back the next day and the fox has dug them out. Yeah. Blood, fish, and bone is a, it's, it's good, but it does come with risks. Vinegar is good to kill weeds and salt. Yes. Now, this is uh, a question I had come in, actually, and I, I, hopefully the person who asked the question got my reply. Uh, I've mentioned using um, seaweed on my asparagus bed as a mulch. And the good thing with seaweed, obviously, it covers over, prevents the weeds. But because it's come from the sea, it's got salt in it. You could wash it off, of course. And asparagus is a coastal plant, so it loves a bit of salt anyway. But that salt, that sea water, does also help reduce the amount of wheat because it's a salt. Now, it does also, if you go in and plant, it could also kill off anything else in that soil. So it's not necessarily great, but it's something to think about. In fact, somebody also recommended pouring vinegar into their blueberries as well as a way of increasing the acidity. Blueberries like the uh, acidic soil, so vinegar can help with that. Not something I prefer to do again. I feel vinegar, uh, vinegar is natural actually, so it'd probably be okay. I, I just prefer to use sulfur chips or um, what do I use? Um, I use something else to it to um, make it more acidic. Uh, that might explain who tore open a sack of blood, fish, and bone on my driveway. Yep. Foxes or even rats, they are attracted by blood and fish and bone. Think about it. It's got the things that they are uh, attracted to, fish and blood and bone, exactly what they are looking for. Uh, Belly Sillian says, are you sought as a weed killer on the hub on his paths? Uh, so there you go. It does work. I'd be worried about using it in my vegetable beds, except for my asparagus, of course. Alison O'Brien, evening all. Sorry I'm late. Hope you all well. Lovely to see you. I know it's confusing with the clocks change. <coughs> People still use weed killer on our allotment. New plot holders love it, then set their dead stuff on fire quickly. Quick way of clearing everything. I hate weed killer. I believe weed killer has a place. In extreme circumstances but I do not use weed killer uh, I think it's horrible stuff in all honesty it's indiscriminate it can kill a lot of things off and it's not necessary um, necessary so what do we do instead lots of things we could do instead uh, but new plot holders I can see why they use it to be honest because often you get you and your allotments in such a bad state that you've got some, or they feel they've got no choice. Personally, I think when an allotment plot is empty, they should get pigs or chickens on the plot just to dig them all over so that there's a good chance they won't have any weeds when they come when it gets taken on. Uh, Hargrave Gas, any tips for putting off pigeons? They decimate my brassicas and terrorize my chickens. Best I can do so far is plastic netting. So, I hate netting. It does work, of course, but I hate netting because I find it's just that extra thing that gets in the way when it comes to getting to your plants and weeding. So, I tend to, if I'm doing some weeding and I've got a netting, I tend to pull that off to the last and then I probably don't end up doing it. So, I try not, if I can get away with it, try not to use nets. What I prefer to do is scarecrows. I pull up several scarecrows. I move them around on an almost daily basis, and that seems to work at scaring off the pigeons. The garlic, uh, garlic water we were talking about earlier, garlic tea, sorry, will probably pull off pigeons as well. I also, and it, I don't know if this actually works, but it's something that I've done. Get little toy dinosaurs, little plastic toy dinosaurs. I put that in my brassicas, and I think the pigeons see those as a bit of a predator as well. Again, I move them around, a bit like a, a, a toy snake as well. Move those around, and that seems to scare off the pigeons as well. Um, nice and cheap way, not necessarily uh, natural, but it does work, I found anyway. Little toy dinosaurs. Turbo Stream says, soda crystals is an effective and natural moss killer. I had masses on my garage roof. I've heard that as well, actually, but um, I've never used that again myself. 
Uh, not just Green Fingers UK blog, uh, Lisa. We have foxes, badgers, rabbits, and a pair of monk jacks on our allotment site. Myself and a few of our neighbours have now built fences around our plot with wire fence on top of them, and we have dug down a couple of feet with thick chicken wire to stop them digging under too. Finally, last year, I managed to grow all the things I couldn't before I sweet corn, carrots, and parsnips. So that comes back to what I was saying earlier. It's about blocking things off, blocking it off so you're... Um, <laughs> Badgers, rabbits, foxes, munchaks, deer, kind of to get in. I think that's probably, for me, the safest way to go about it. Natural perithium sprays from chrysanthemum plants works on caterpillars, safe on fruit and veg. That's interesting. So if you grew chrysanthemums with that around your fruit and veg, would that help at keeping off the caterpillars as well? Good, interesting question there. Uh, a double barreled shotgun sorts them out from Oracle. What was that about? Um, was that about the, the pigeons? The pigeons. Now, I have I have gone shooting before, so I'm not against guns. Um, I don't. I'm not a vegan. I'm not a vegetarian. I do eat meat, so I'm not. I'm not going to say anything again. I don't. Want, I don't like seeing animals in pain. That's what I want to say. I really don't like seeing animals in pain. But of course, if you are able to shoot pigeons, I want to say you take those pigeons home and you cook them. Um, you use them so they don't get wasted. That, that's the only thing I say with that. Um, yeah, Jim M also says that if the pigeon situation gets too bad. Don't forget, they are delicious. <coughs> I mean, yeah, they are delicious. I agree. I agree. Um, maybe not okay in a gun. Air rifle or shotgun works too. There's things you've got to bear in mind, you know. Um, I agree, Richard, but I haven't to net everything. My plot is surrounded by a forest area. Wood pigeons would clean me out overnight without it. I, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. There is... I think if you can get like um, statues of owls or um, birds of prey, they're sort of models of those that float in the air as well. Um, it's an idea. I think they, they get scared of the pigeons. I, I, I think these are natural remedies, aren't they? They, they do fall into that remit. I mean, we're, we're stepping more into that pest control as well. But, um, yeah. Um, that's something something I would think about as well is getting uh, owls or statues of owls or um, falcons and birds of prey um, to scare off the pigeons. I believe they work. Again, I've not had to try that myself. Um, but I do find that, that may sound completely weird, little model dinosaurs. You buy a pound shop for about a pound each. Well, you got this in, in my allotment and this little triceratops sitting amongst my cabbages. And on a whole, my cabbages don't get affected by birds. That being said, we do have seagulls in the area. And I don't know if they scare off a lot of our pigeons and things as well. We are very close to the sea, very close to the sea, as a lot of people will know. Um, uh, yeah. Don't practice on live birds. Be a good shot before you do, talking about the... Um, um, what do you call it? Talking about the um, pigeons, that is. Uh, you should always use what you kill, but most only use the pigeon breast. I, I believe in using everything. Uh, we had chicken last night, and we've made stock out of the bones. Something I always do. We have chicken or any uh, um, anything on the bone, we make stock out of it. I bet you're a dead eye sick, Richard. Two shots and two dead. Come on, spill the beans. No, I'm really not a very good shot. Um, I don't. I've had a bit of practice with shotgun and air rifle, but I'm not a very good shot at all. Um, I think it's one of those things. I think if I got enough practice, I could probably do. I'm not sure my allotment committee would approve of the shotgun method, nor the local police for that matter. Yeah, we are stepping into grounds that is a bit tricky here with this shotgun. So um, <laughs> the breast is a good bit, but pigeon stock is great for stew as well. 
a big fan of that. Like I say, make stock all the time. I tried one of them poles with a toy falcon attached that blows around in the wind. Next day at the plot, a wood pigeon was perched on the pole. What is it? The kites as well. They're like little kites. I think the, the design on the kites is meant to replicate eyes as well. And that's meant to scare them off. But the pigeon obviously wasn't scared. Perhaps he got wary of what's going on. And perhaps, I know like scarecrows, they need moving around quite regularly. Otherwise, the pigeons soon learn that they're just decoration. Um so perhaps like the, the like those, they do need moving around quite regularly. The perithium extract is made from a seed cases, so chrysanthemums are no good as a companion plant. I did okay, thank you. That's what that's why I wasn't. Well, that's why I was asking. Let's go have a swig of this water. So has anybody else got any um, any other natural remedies, natural plant remedies that they can suggest they? they use or has anybody got any other problems that we can uh, that we can find a natural remedy for um before we finish the show it's gone quick tonight it's i'm just looking at the clock 10 past seven coming up to um so yeah the rest adrian says the rest of the pigeon is too fiddly unless it goes into stew uh i won't worry about a plot holder on our allotment only had it to hide guns unbelievable what some people would do indeed yeah uh, Rebecca, I guess I'm a bit more sympathetic to nature. I believe everything is a right to life, so just grow sacrifices. Actually, that's actually a very good point, Rebecca, and, and that's a good thing as well. Something that um, I had a question years ago about the badgers, and I said then that perhaps what you should do is grow some sweet corn in a different area that it was easy for the badgers to get. Perhaps that's the same with your uh, those your brassicas. Perhaps pot, uh, uh, some cabbages or some brassicas, somewhere that's much easier for the pigeons to get hold of, much younger, as a sacrificial crop, so that they can go and get those instead. Um, <coughs> um, just a thought. Just a thought. Sacrificial. And I'm... <laughs> I agree. With, I, I mean, I'll go, I do agree with Rebecca. I don't get many losses from birds, but I kind of grow more than what I need because I know some are going to be taken. Like I said, I don't like seeing any animal in pain. So, yeah, flying rats. Sorry, pigeons are scared of red and yellow colours. Yeah, there was years ago, we, because um, my day job, I'm on rooftops a lot and there used to be this sort of paint that um pest controllers would paint on the top of roofs now to us we couldn't see any color but because the birds could see into the infrared they could see this red almost looking like fire from this paint so they would then go on this rooftop so that that might be something to look at as well plant some for them and some for me and i agree with that as well uh, my friend said exactly that, Rebecca. Yep. Uh, I have buzzards fly over my farm. Seen one catch a pigeon mid-flight. Fantastic. I've got to say, I was driving up. Where was I driving up? The A3, or was it the M3? One of the two the other day. And up in the air was this beautiful, big bird of prey. I think it was a falcon. Um, and, you know, I could see it was going to pounce on something. Uh, and I've seen them catch pigeons in, in the air. It's amazing amazing thing to see um again this is something that i feel we don't see many buzzards or pit falcons so much we sometimes get a peregrine falcon hit in my garden but we don't see them so much we actually have parrot parrots in my garden but that's a whole other story um but we don't see so many of these birds of prey anymore because i believe because <laughs> As more and more of these insects are being wiped out and the food chain is being obliterated, it's not so much for these birds of prey. Uh, farmers hate pigeons. They can decimate a crop of oilseed rape very quickly. And it's, yeah, yeah, it, it's it's one of these that it's easy, as gardeners, I think it's easy for us to 
criticise farmers for taking the action that is necessary. But I do believe it is necessary to take some action. Like I said, I just feel if you're going down the route of shooting or killing an animal, then you've got to use it to your advantage as well so its life isn't wasted. I don't like saying that because I do feel like it's quite cruel. Like I say, I don't like hearing of any animal in pain. But I'm not vegan. I'm not vegetarian. I do eat meat. So I'm part of the problem there in some ways, if that's the right way to say it. I use a black strap molasses solution to water my spuds to help stop scab. Now, what is molasses, Digwell? I've heard a lot about molasses, and I've always wondered just what it is. Because when I hear molasses, I think of treacle. Digwell, over to you. Let me know what molasses is. One for the mouse, one for the crow, one for the rot, one to rot and one to grow. Yeah, yeah. Exactly that. Backing up what uh, Rebecca said, grow more to sacrifice. Uh, when we are sowing peas with the children, we put three seeds in each hole, one for the mouse, one for the crow, and one for us. One thing that old gardeners used to do with pea seeds, and I'm not going to advocate this one bit, do not do this, but old gardeners used to sow pea seeds in paraffin because that way the mouse would not eat the pea seeds. Do not do it. I'm not advocating it at all, but it's what people used to do, because mice are so... Uh, well, they like their seeds. They like their pea seeds. What I recommend when it comes to sowing peas is put a bit of chicken wire over the top so the mice cannot get to it so easily. A bit of protection. Again, it needs to be quite, um, quite a heavy gauge chicken wire because mice can crawl into some small things try growing things just for badgers to stop them touching other crops but they began, began coming in every night partying and destroying other crops areas of my plot so this definitely did not work <sighs> yeah I, it's it's a difficult one my idea again I've not so much had trouble with badgers except on my old allotment which I got over by making it impossible for badgers to get to my sweet corn but my idea is if you make it so difficult for them to get to your sweet corn for example but there's sweet corn down the road that is easy for them to get to they're more than likely to go to the easier crops in my theory that might be just completely illogical but that's just my my theory uh digwell wishes he had the room to grow forth as uh the the rhyme said earlier it's a vicious Viscous substance resulting from refining of sugar cane or sugar beets into sugar. Okay, so it's basically a type of sweet treacle, I guess. I was going to try growing sugar beets one, one year. I keep meaning to order the seed. Excuse me, sorry. Um, uh, Rebecca likes that little rhyme. I think that's a good rhyme. I cannot say to use a shotgun. I have not used mine for 20 years. There we go. Good, good, good thing. Um, so peas in rain gutter suspended in the air. Plant out when big enough. I think that's a good idea, actually. Uh, I know a lot of people do that. So you would feel, get, get a piece of rain gutter, cut it to the size of your bed, um, add some caps on the end, fill it with compost, sow your pea seeds, um, let them grow. Once they are up and going, put the ring gutter, of course, somewhere where mice can't get to it. Slide, take the cap off and just slide it straight into a, a, a trench in the ground. And I think Digwell does this. I know Muddy Boots certainly has done it on his videos. And it's a good way of sowing peas. I've, I've tried it in the past. It didn't work so well for me. Uh, for many reasons. Um, all very well if you have the space. Um, yeah, I know space is an issue. This is where we're going with this discussion of uh, growing food or grow your own to help the cost of living crisis. To be fair, the birds are only eating their natural food. It's us that tempts them by growing beds of what they like. So maybe, as we said last week, companion planting might help. I do believe companion planting is a big help with everything like this. So, uh, yeah, I've, I've got lots of ideas um, 
companion planting and sacrificial crops uh, and natural remedies. I'm going to have a swig of, of water quickly. So please keep your ideas coming in of some natural remedies. As I say, I know we've got garlic tea, which we... we well, have a look at this. Um, I'll leave that to Steve next week, and I'll show you what we do to it next week in order to take it to the next level. But I can see. I don't know if you can necessarily see it in this. Uh, when I poured this water in, it was crystal clear, but I can see it's starting to look a little bit yellow already. So it's obviously taking on some of that, that garlic essence into the water. It's starting to become this garlic tea. Uh, Jim, Rebecca, it's very old. Very old. I dread to think how old that rhyme. Yeah, I've had that rhyme many times as well. And I think it's very, very true. Um, again, I try to grow. I mean, I, I probably sow far too many seeds anyway, because I do believe that I've had too many plants, then stuff dies and I've always got backups. Right. Keep your ideas coming. Um, we've got about just over 10 minutes left of the show. So on the podcast tomorrow, though it could change, to be honest, on the, on the main podcast, that is, on the uh, the audio podcast, I should call it, um, you're going to be hearing more about my whole idea on how Grow Your Own can help with um, the cost of living crisis because the, the input has been so great and people want to hear more on that. And it's going to be a continuing project. Like I say, we're setting up areas to show what we can do in these small areas. Um, next week, and this is kind of folding into this same subject, I want to have a few ideas. Um, how do we do this? How do we do this? Um, ideas for space saving ideas. So how we can grow more plants in smaller areas for next week, space saving uh, and then the week after that, on the, the live show, that is, money-saving ideas. Um, so you, two weeks go in there. But space-saving ideas, hanging baskets with tomatoes and strawberries is one of the ideas I like. Hopefully, um, Vobes, Richard Vobes, if he's there, it's uh, going to be something we can use in his garden as well. <laughs> Designing his garden for him already. Rebecca, I'm only 40. It's not that old, is it? I'm, I'm 40 next month, believe it or not. Uh, I'm not looking forward to it, though. Uh, oh, I thought you meant me. Um, oh, sorry. Sorry, yes. <laughs> I got that. I got that. Rebecca thought that Jim saying it's very old. Um uh, Rebecca thought she he meant he she, she's very old. No, the po the poem is very old. Rhyme, that's it. It's a pity that Bordeaux mixture is now banned from sale. It's organic and the only way to stop blight and tomatoes and potatoes. And for peach leaf cull as well, Bordeaux mixture. Not only banned from sale, but if you have it in your shed, I mean it was banned years ago, so it's unlikely anybody has it. Um, but if you have it, you're not allowed to use it. I think the copper. Copper mixture or copper something is an alternative, but I don't know how safe that really is. Um, it just, just a, it's just one of those because Bordeaux mixture, which was basically a copper, uh, copper mixture, is banned. It was organic. Sorry, was it organic? Yeah, it was organic, and it was so good at. Fungal diseases. Peach leaf cup. Oh, I knew drinking water was going to give me wind. <laughs> uh, next week's topic, I think I said space saving. Chili Kate, topic sounds great. We getting an invite to the party, which, yes, right. That I'm going to be um, the meetup, the meetup, yes, yes. I'm going to make that announcement. On tomorrow's podcast, supporter members will hear a bit more about it tonight. It's very difficult because we're trying to work out all the in, in, uh, things that we need to know. Um, I've got to set a 
form up on the website. <laughs> so we got an idea of numbers. Um, so, but yeah, you can hear it. I'll, I'll go through it again next week as well. You will hear all the details, but I've got to make sure members of my supporters club hear, hear first of everything. So they hear about it tonight. Uh, the podcast then gets all the details tomorrow and then you guys next week. I know some of you listen to podcast and supporting members as well. So, yeah. Uh, I will be 53 this year. Old fart. No, you're not an old fart. 40 is still very young. I know 40 is still very young. I just don't like the idea of turning another decade. Uh, I'm going to be 51 next month. Still young, still young indeed. It was bad to prevent copper buildup in the soil, which is, uh, yeah, Bordeaux mixture was bad to build for that. Yet they still sell like this copper mixture. I've seen it anyway. Um, and copper is found, oh no, it's, it's not found in the soil. It's kind of, is it? Well, well, it's made from stuff found in the soil. Uh, spring chicken turbo stream. Uh, copper sulfate is the main thing in Bordeaux mixture. I think it's copper sulfate mix that I have seen for sale in garden centres. Uh, but as far as I was aware, Bordeaux mixture is banned, so I've avoided buying copper sulfate for that same reason. Spacing, saving ideas. Now you've got me thinking, saving money, my favourite thing to do, gardening on a budget. Um, like I say, that's the next two weeks figured out. Uh, what have we got? Uh, Adrian says he's 67. Still young these days, though, aren't you? Uh, look like we are playing... Looking like we are playing third play. Lots of it's okay. We will bring a birthday gift. Oh, you mean for my birthday? Don't worry. The the actual meet up isn't going to be till September when hopefully everybody's garden is going to be able to look after themselves a bit. But I wouldn't want to bring everybody for a meet up in April May time because we're always so busy with our gardens. So we're looking at September for this meet up. Plenty of time. More details will be available. I, I will be 59 this year. I'm old. No, you are not. Uh, age ain't nothing but a number. Exactly right. You can buy copper sulfite in quick lime. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is the only thing. You can buy the stuff. Um, but they said it was banned. I must be the oldest newbie. No such thing at all. <coughs> you don't look it, are Adrian. Uh do you, don't you think gardening keeps you young? It's great exercise, great fresh all round good for you. I think there's a lot to be said for gardening and keeping you young. I certainly think it's less stressful. And that goes a long way in helping keeping us look young and look after us. I mean, I'm not saying gardening isn't stressful. There are, of course, times when everything's against you. But I think even when the bad times hit you, you don't get a stress in the same way that you get when you're, say, at work and you're having a bad day and you're like, you can feel your blood boil. I don't think you get that when you get a stressful time in the garden or a bad time in the garden, I should say. Uh, right, Anna Jones, you can buy copper sulfate on Amazon if you really have to use it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's the main proponent of Bordeaux mixture, I know, but Bordeaux was banned because they didn't want copper sulfate building up in the soil. Uh, yes, copper is found in rocks, uh, our ground, you can see on my farm. It, that, yeah, this is, yeah, it, it just doesn't understand. Um, well, that's Stuart Jackson. You've beaten about there like you, you're 21. There you go. I'm 37, but my back is saying way older today. Always look after your back. Always look after your back. Um, gardening is good for you from Turbo Stream. I cycle to and from the plot too. Yeah, we, 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 we walk to and from the plot quite often in the evenings with Roxy now. She loves it because she gets plenty of walks that way. You can still buy Bordeaux mixture, but I think it's been repurposed somehow and says don't spray on your cups. <coughs> I have actually seen Bordeaux mixture still for sale, but like I say, as far as I knew, it was about, was it 10, 15 years ago when it was banned? So I'm, I'm still a bit unsure how it is there for sale. Gun is the only thing that kept me going over the last past couple of years, isn't that the truth? I know when I was furloughed, it was um, 
Guardian uh, Guardian Daily, which was a which was lovely. It was lovely. I wish I could spend all my time doing that. Uh, I feel it, though. Yeah, okay. Uh, Sean Cameron used a copper hand trail. He reckoned it kept the slugs away. Well, copper bands do help at keeping the slugs away. I know that much. So there's probably some logic to that. Make your own. It's easy, talking about Bordeaux mixture. And so does Charles Dowling with these copper, uh, I think that's what he means anyway, copper hand trails. I haven't seen any of Charles Dowling videos for a while. Um, I'm slipping back into that habit of not watching so much on uh, YouTube at the moment. It's just so busy, so busy with the garden. Um, we get rid of our TV license very soon as well, believe it or not. Uh, right, we have got three minutes left of the show. So um, we'll start thinking about wrapping up. Like I say, next week we are doing the space saving ideas so that we can help build up my balcony area my um patio area for how grow your own can help with the cost of living crisis and the week after money saving and also i want to use some of these space saving ideas if richard Bose is still watching in his garden because i'm gonna <laughs> force him to do a few bits in his garden. Uh, all right, but as well as the activities, the community spirit on the allotment is great for unwinding after work. I agree. And that's something about allotments. You do get a good community spirit. Enjoy this evening as usual from not just Green Fingers, the UK blog, aka Lisa. Thank you for your Sunday evening chats. Far better than Gardener's World. I've watched Gardener's World for a long time. Um, I get tech... I should do, I should do, but I don't. Well, I won't be able to soon because the TV license will be gone. 20, I walked to my plot 20 foot from my front door, 20 inches perhaps. Yeah, I mean, my that's why I like my back garden, but I do like the community spirit of an allotment. I have to say, gardening kept me going over lockdown. I'm a key worker and it was incredibly stressful working, so gardening saved me. Yeah, we were the same. We were exactly the same. It was just our our sanctuary. I am on year two, I'm on year two of no TV license, Richard. We're about to join it. We don't watch TV anymore, so it makes no sense. Good night, everyone, and God bless from Oracle. And good night to you. See you all next week from Turbo Stream. And thanks, Richard. Enjoyed that. No, thank you, everyone, for joining. It's good to see so many people. You'll have to get on SJG next week as he's building a very small garden. Yes, that's right. He's building the smallest garden, but something we're going to talk about. Uh, yeah, no, thanks so much for joining us. It's been great to see you. Great for this conversation. Great to get the ideas. Hope some of you have got some good ideas of some natural homemade remedies that you can use in your garden or what you can go out and buy. Um, let's say next week, uh, space saving ideas. So we're going to have a lot of fun with that and see what we can do um i think that's about it don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe don't forget to follow don't forget to click the bell notification to know when we go live don't forget to do whatever you else it says you can do um <laughs> it does believe it or not just giving us a thumbs up goes a long way to helping us get seen more and more and build the audience anyway wrapping it in on a bit it's half seven I'm done for this evening. Thanks so much for joining me. And uh, until next week, you take care, keep up the gardening, and please do share your photos. Please do get some videos sent in as well. Again, also great. Till next time, you take care. I'll see you again. Uh, I've just realised I haven't set myself up, so I've got to waffle just a little bit longer so I've got the right thing set up. Here we go. Take care, guys. See you again next time.